Hello there and welcome to the Power BI selection panel to show height chart tutorial. In this tutorial, I will show you how you can show or height chart and what is the reason why would you like to do that. And uh, before I show you just a quick information that this sheet, this entire sheet where I have posted already a lot of videos related to the Power BI is something you can find search and jump directly to those tutorials using the link provided just so that you can easily uh, based on your learning you can you can search and uh, learn it based on your needs so that is present in the description and you can access it pretty easily all right now let's move on to the power bi to see why we need this uh, this particular feature and how to enable it all right so here we are within power bi and we have a lot of components over here we have this vertical bar chart we have this horizontal bar chart we have this pie chart and the tables and sometimes from the perspective of designing the right chart you want to experiment with multiple charts and work with your end users to define what the right chart is for you and in that case sometimes either you create like multiple pages or within the single page you can actually have multiple iteration by utilizing the selection panel so that uh, you don't have to create multiple pages which increases obviously the size and uh, the engine will also be loaded based on how much uh, components or how much visualization you are creating but this will going to give you the selection panel over here which i'm showing you in a minute is going to give you the optimized experience okay so to enable this we will go into the view and we will click on the selection panel now if you see in the selection panel we have a couple of dashboards like the sales by ship mode and if i click over here this chart is selected now you want to experiment let's say with this chart and uh, may you may want to hide it and uh, see whether another chart is going to make sense or not so for example over here if you see you can hide this visual and you can create a separate chart here so that so for example you have uh, let's say the matrix chart or you may have like the multi row kpi whatever you want to choose you can create it over here and in this way you don't have to create like multiple pages and when you are having the meetings with your end users to show them how the visual look like you can basically enable the multiple visualizations as to what makes sense to place it over here which goes as per the theme of the entire business dashboard so this is a helpful scenario where you can experiment with uh, your multiple visualization you don't have to delete it let's say if in a, in a normal scenario you may need to delete this visualization but you don't need to delete in in using the selection panel you can just hide this and once you have hidden it you can actually going to create another visualization let's say if i create a funnel you will provide the funnel over here and see whether this funnel is going to make sense or not and uh, if let's say funnel is is now present here so you think that funnel is not making sense you will hide this and you will enable the uh, the previous visualization so that's why i wanted to show you because it gives you a lot of flexibility where you don't have to create multiple pages or you don't have to delete the visualization but by using the selection panel over here you can hide or show the visualization which makes sense for the for most for the dashboard and this will going to definitely help you when you are having your meetings the designs meetings with your end users so that's about it on the selection panel for showing or hiding the information or the visualization on the power bi page hello there and welcome to the new power bi tutorial and in this power bi tutorial i will show you how you can create the advanced chart or the animated race bar chart within power bi so first we will look at how the animated race bar chart looks like and what sort of scenarios you can really achieve with the help of this chart and before i move ahead just a quick information that this spreadsheet is present in the description so you can search any tutorial that i have posted and using the link which is in front of the particular chart or particular title is you can access directly from here all right so let's go ahead into the power bi and see it in action all right so here we are within power bi and what do we have is the the bar chart which is a horizontal bar chart 
and if i just start the animation let me just make a small shift in this it will start the animation okay so that's basically showing you how the category or the sales are moving over a period of years right so it is starting from 2009 and across different years how the sales for various province is basically moving up and down and this is a very common type of chart uh, that you may have seen on various social media platform to showing you you know how the population of the country is moving or various countries moving over a period of years how the production of let's say milk is something which is increasing or decreasing or maybe you know it's about checking the immigration how the immigration is changing over a period of time for all those scenarios where you need to showcase the change over a period of time among various categories you will going to use the animated race bar chart from a business scenario perspective you may want to show that how the regions are moving over a period of years like in the last 10 years how each region has moved up or down or maybe the product categories have moved up or down or maybe the countries if you have like various countries uh, sales how do they have moved up and down uh, over a period of years so just one thing uh, to keep in mind like i said if you need to show the change over a period of time uh, by moving the categories up and down you will going to use the animated race bar chart and animated race bar chart is usually not present in this however i am i have already configured it so it's present here but by default what visualization you get within power bi you will not going to get it for that you need to make sure that you have the account uh, so right now i have my account and i have signed in into the power bi and this has to be created with your corporate email id so i have used my official email id to create it so you need to use either your official email id or there is a workaround if you can get the a custom domain email id right maybe your friend has a website or maybe your any contact has a website which has the custom domain name that can be used but if you are trying to log in with the help of the gmail hotmail or anything you will not be able to create the account that's the only restriction which which it has and the workaround i told you either use official email id or use the email id which is uh, maybe custom domain uh, that your friend or contact is having okay so how do we create it and before that how do we bring it so i'll just delete this and uh, let me write okay let me delete try to delete this so delete is not working but i can still go here and click on remove okay so to do that i need to go here in the get more visuals these three ellipses if you can see need to click here click on the get more visuals and once we are inside the get more visual these this small pop-up window shows you the various categories where custom made chart is present so here you have like editors pick the pick which has been picked by the editor um, all the different charts and you have advanced analytics data visualization all the different categories which you can explore but the chart that we are looking over here is time because it shows the change over a period of time so we'll click here on the time part and down there we should find the animated race bar chart and you need to click add once you will click on add it will be added over here so since i have already done that my animated bar bar race chart is coming here now there is a small thing you may be noticing is that tick sort of a you know facebook or twitter you may have seen that tick that means a verified account so here it means that it is a certified visualization that can be used within power bi so it's certified by the power bi team to use it within power bi however this one is not used and they have to go through a various parameters just to make sure that uh, your report or your uh, you know dashboard that you are making is, is not being impacted and there are several parameters that they need to complete before getting a tick just to make sure that it is a stabilized one but for now for our experiment we'll just move ahead and um, click over here animated race bar chart okay so if i just expand this now here i have name name is nothing but the categories 
so we can have region or province i took the province so i'll take the province again over here now the value value can be sales or profit earlier i took sales i can take the profit as well if i need um i can i need to choose the period so i'll take the order date over here and as i will have the period the lowest level is day so what it is showing you that uh, over a period of various days how the sales is but now day value is accumulated by the various values that we have like the year quarter month and day so if we need to change this up to a particular hierarchy like for example here simply we just have to cross this cross this and cross this so now you see the profit how the profit is changing showing you the ontario is basically moving up and down a little bit but still by the end of 2012 it's again up and down so this is the basic configuration but you have some setting over here and in the wish utilization setting what it's showing you is the top 10 values right so if you have top 5 top 10 top 20 you can change this also you have duration like 1000 is here we can change this to 5000 to basically see whether it is changing or it's it's like changing but it's very slow now right so we can experiment with this now you can see and this looks uh, easy when there is a shift in the categories and you need to explain it in front of an audience like alberta is moving up but now it's Ontario is back, Quebec is moving very fast. So if you need to explain to your end user, you definitely need time to understand how the movement is happening, not like on the 1000 where it is happening so fast that we can't even, uh, we can't even look that, right? Can't, you can't explain with that. So I think 5000 seems to me a good, uh, good number to, to basically explain it when you are showing it to the user also autoplay is on what should be the font size you want to hide any grid hide the number hide the period what should be the period size which you are showing over here all of these settings is something very useful and uh, you can easily create it so that's that's pretty much about how you can create the animated race bar chart within power bi and using any data that you want all right so that's about it and i'll meet you in the next video with the new topic hello there and welcome to the new power bi tutorial how to create infographic or image based bar chart this is a bar chart which is using the different type of images or icons to create the chart for example you may have seen within a newspaper and in a magazine for example if they are showing you the sale of coca-cola or pepsi you will be seeing that they are using the pepsi bottle or the coca-cola bottle uh, to display the the sale over a period of time or across different categories so similar sort of chart we can create with the help of the infographic bar chart over here which i'll show you in a minute and uh, before that just a quick information that this spreadsheet is present in the description and you can access any of the previously created tutorial using by searching it and using the link which is present in front of here so let's go ahead and use this uh, power bi infographic or the image based bar chart like i used to call it okay so let me move to the power bi all right here we are within the power bi and i'll just go inside these three dots to get more visuals in the previous video i've explained that uh, by default you won't be able to get it until unless you are signed in with the help of your corporate email id or any custom domain name email id which is other than the general email providers like the gmail hotmail or yahoo All right so you need to create an account and then only you can get inside the get more visual so here we have the section power bi certified we need to just go over here and here is the infographic designer so if i just click over here you will see that it is an infographic designer it is by microsoft corporation so that means it is safe also it has the blue tick mark which means the visual is certified by power bi to use it from the performance and uh, stability perspective all right so now you can click on the add 
once you click on the add it will take like a couple of seconds and we have this infographic designer chart over here so what do we need is click over here and if you see uh, the infographic designer object is present here and now from here we can basically take category legend measure column by and row by and let's start taking the category first and the category let's say we take the customer segment all right let me try again and put it properly and uh, for measure let me take the sales this is like the minimum what i need okay and now if i come over here this is a simple bar chart so nothing interesting over here but if i click on the pencil icon over here you will see that we have the shape one and in the format section we have like couple of options going to basic and if i change this to something like this oval sort of a shape or circle sort of a shape or maybe if it is something like mobile sales let's say for example so if i just click on the mobile that will show that in various categories how the mobile sales is happening in the corporate customer segment home office consumer and small supplies so this basically makes the visualization more interactive and more uh, easily consumable by the end user then you have like multiple units which you want uh, to increase and right now the unit is one let's say we take five so for each row and each column we have five we have the option here amount and column and row and column which we can configure and down there you will see some more changes like the value color if you want to change the value color to to anyone which what we like uh, we have the unit background we want to keep the ratio this is again you know for to make it more and more customized make it a compact unit so play around you can play around with this but uh, but this is the main or basic setting you need to do to make sure like for example for direction left to right right to left top to bottom we can experiment with this and see what is making sense for us but this is sort of a main settings which i wanted to show you uh based on the shape that you have you can choose the uh, the information from here like food and drink household nature so already a lot of shapes but uh, down there you have the uploaded option let's say for example you want to do it for your organization as the icon you want to upload so you can click on upload and uh, based on where your information is like from pictures over here wherever it is present you can just pull it information and uh, put it out there and you will be able to select it from the uploaded section so that's about uh, that's about it but you have like couple of more options as to the main shape or any insert shape that you want to have it from here i would just not recommend that however once you get more used to of it then you play around because you have shape here and you have shape here as well so and what what happens is it creates multiple shapes here once you start experimenting it and it confuses you so if you are just starting i would stick i would like you to stick to basics keep the base shape shape one over here and select what shape you want for this shape one and uh, down you have like insert image option you have insert text option you have arrange element and you have delete element option just so that you are uh doing the right setting and settings is already present here so that's about uh, how you can do this but you have like couple of more options for example if you want to have a color as part of the legend so maybe i can take the customer segment again over here and uh, you will see that nothing much is changing however the legend color is so it's not making an impact so no point in doing this but uh we have options of doing it the column by and row by as well so what it does is based on the field we are putting in column or row it creates the categorization or it divides the entire visualization so for example if i bring the region over here in column by you will see that uh, each visualization is divided into column by which is sort of a trellis option a trellis option is something where you divide each chart into multiple rows and multiple columns so here this is column by but if i bring it here in the row by you will see it like this which is also another interesting way of looking at it 
to, to the entire visualization, if I put it in a focus mode, you will see that for each category, for each particular region, how the sales really looks like. So that this, make, this makes uh, interactivity a lot using this infographic. One can clearly understand where the sales are high, where the sales are low because all these values of these mobiles are relative. So if you are having a mobile based company, that's probably a visualization which will going to help you a lot. Also, you can format if these lines bothers you a lot. You can you can basically change this with the uh, settings over here. So for example, in the small multiple, since it is a small multiple, what you have is something down there is a show separation. So we have this separation. I think it just bothers end users eye. It becomes, this is far more relevant if you see. So you have these, uh, the separation is gone and you can easily see the information. So as you will explore more, you will find the title, but I wanted to show you as to how you will going to uh, use this or enable this and what is the functionality that you can get. So for example, if you want to disable X axis or if you want to disable Y axis. So all these lines are now gone, right? So that's that's all about how you want to, how you may want to experiment, what makes sense, what does not make sense. And uh, yeah, it will give you the output as, as you would require. So that's about it. And I'll now meet you in the new topic with the new video. Hello there and welcome to the new Power BI tutorial where I'll show you how you can create the word cloud in Power BI. So word cloud is uh, one of the interesting visualization, which is based on the idea that based on the number of times or based on the measure that we have higher the measure bigger the word which gives an idea about let's say for example uh, you are looking at customer text maybe especially for those cases where they are returning the product and you may want to identify what are those top three or four reasons because of which customers are returning the product right or maybe the customer reviews, negative customer reviews, positive customer reviews. So that helps uncover the insight from the unstructured data and give us the information back on which we can take action. All right, uh, before I move ahead, a uh, quick information that this is spreadsheet is present in the description. So there are a lot of previous videos that I have posted on uh, YouTube and you can access, you can search these videos here and then jump directly to those videos using the link that I'm maintaining over here. This will going to help you easily do all the search so that you don't have to search it across my channel if you're looking for a specific video or you are planning to create your old, own learning uh, uh, library in terms of what you want to cover first, what you want to cover next. All right, now let's move on to the Power BI. So here we are within the Power BI and to create the word cloud, we need to come over here, get more visual and we need to click on import a visual from a uh, get more visual yeah not not from the file all right uh, now i'll go into the power bi certified section in this window and down there on the second line you have the word cloud so if i click on the word cloud it shows the word cloud is a visual representation of word frequency and value right and it gets instant insight into the most important terms in your data. And you can, like it is showing you, you can create sort of a quadrant as well based on the dimension value. So let's click on add and see whether it is adding it over here. Clicking OK. Now I'm going to click the word cloud over here. So here is our word cloud. So what I'm going to take is the product name let's say for example and uh, we will going to take the sorry the category into the product name so these are like the various product names and right now it's based on the frequency like xerox is coming 121 times that means a lot of products that is related to xerox and every and uh, you have outlet black gbc and uh, based on how we want to uh, enlarge them or right now it is just the count of words but let's say we want to enlarge or we want to give them a weight of sales right where the sales is happening most so now you see 
the word cloud is changed so now the chair dot dot matrix so it's definitely something related to the printer conference tables printer this is something which is coming now if you don't want sales you want to understand the profit part of it you can click on the profit and you will see that binding machine havelet copier inkjet printer canon so definitely it shows that uh, something around the printer is is really uh, giving you the lot of uh, values or a lot of profit okay now up to you uh, whether you want product category but uh, if you want something else uh, you can even get that uh, for example province is something you may want to get an idea on like ontario is is coming out clearly right uh, island or nova or nona is, is something which is quite low so whatever category you will going to pull in over here it will going to create the visualization for you and the best part is that not just with the frequency count but with the help of the your measures you can use this after that now let's look at some of the formatting options so in formatting we have like the data color what is the default color the color for ontario and and your different categories now it's up to you if you want to choose a, a different setting altogether for colors based on your needs uh, because some colors are considered as the warm color some colors are neutral some colors are you know showing a different sort of emotion so it's a different uh, so, you know study altogether so based on how you want to use it you may want to use the change the color then you have these top words like is the uh, and all of those kind of stop words which does not reveal anything is something it is uh, you can remove it especially in situation where you have a complete unstructured data for example the customer comments or product reviews so there they use a lot of these stop of sp sp um, stop words uh, i don't know stop words yeah so the is and all is is something which they use will going to remove that also there is option that uh, you want to rotate text if you don't want right now I've just switched off so it's showing you directly if you want to rotate you can enable it and you can specify how much is the minimum angle you want maybe minus 30 to uh, maybe 60 right so this is something which you can probably have it as per your needs and then some some information uh, pre-estimate words uh, you can enable or disable and experiment around it the quality how much quality you want you can get it out and it's more around experimenting and figuring out whether it makes sense for your situation or not but these are like some of the basic and default settings which you can change as per the needs that you have so that's pretty much all about the word cloud chart and now i'll meet you in the next topic the new video Hello there and welcome to the new Power BI tutorial and in this tutorial I will show you how you can create a Power BI bowtie chart which is a quite a nice representation when you have the connected data points and you want to understand the impact one data point is making to one level down data point and I will show you in a minute how you can view this and just a quick information if you are new to this video then you can find this sheet link within the description where I have posted this and the several other videos that is related to the Power BI where you can search for any of the video uh, based on your interest and you can jump to that video directly using the link present here. Also, a separate link is present for a Google Data Studio report where all of the videos related to my channel is present and that is also present in the link in the description. All right, now let's go ahead into the Power BI and see it in action. So here we are within the Power BI and here is a bow tie chart which I have created. And the way to read this chart is something like this, where you have, let's say on the right hand side, the main category, which is a product category, and you have the technology sales, you have the furniture sales. Sales I'm saying because sales is the value which I've taken it over here. So you have technology sales, you have furniture sales, and you have office supply sales. And down there, you have the subcategory. That means one level down information. Now, if I want to understand what are the technology sales and their respective product subcategory sales, 
then I can click on the technology over here and in technology you will see the only four different categories which is present like office machines telephone and communication copiers and fax computer peripherals similarly if i again click it over here i am back to my original visualization now if i want to understand the office furnishing i can just click on office furnishing and it will indicate the furniture over here that 690 698k is here and similarly 698k is here so that is the value which we can and uh, we can select on each of the side wherever we want either on the right side over here or on the left side over here and we have the visualization filter based on how we are making a selection so how we can create this type of a chart within the power bi well for this you need to use the custom visualization and for using the custom visualization you need to make sure that you are logged in and to log in you need to have the either the corporate email id that means your working email id where you need to create the login or if you have let's say any website account which is other than the normal email ids like the gmail yahoo hotmail if you have other than these email ids then probably it will going to work in your case okay so what i'll do is i'll back to the report and i'll just remove this i'll come over here and remove okay so i'll go into the visualization now and over here we have these three ellipses we'll click on the get more visuals and when we'll click on the get more visuals it will take going to take a couple of seconds to display this visualization so here we have the various different visualizations and under the editors pick we have this bow tie chart where we need to click on add also if it is not appearing for you you can search it over here uh, like the bow tie for example so if you search by this b o w t i e then it will sh it should show you this bow tie chart and once you click on add you have the visualization added over here and since i have already added i have shown you the presentation just now so it's already added and it's like this so this is the icon a very small icon but you can get a hint as this indicates the bow tie chart so i'll just close this and i will going to click over here so once i click over here it will ask a couple of values like the source the value and the destination all right so let's try to add the source as product category which i have it over here and the value should be sales and uh, finally we have the destination which i want let's say the product subcategory one level down and i can just expand this all right so i have the same visualization created for me and you can see very easy it is to create it over here in other tools like for example in tableau and all uh, you can create this but uh, there is a different settings like for example you need to know trigonometry over there uh, just just to create this chart and you know find these curves and things like those so here if you have the uh, if you have the login id your uh, corporate email id then you can very easily utilize this by adding it as a custom visual all right so we have this and you have some formatting option over here for example you have the bow tie title which is related to the bow tie titles right now it is showing you sales by product category and product subcategory which you can format based on what should be the text tooltip text what should be the font color background color and the text size similarly you want the data labels how you want the data levels should be auto units you can change it to thousands millions or billions so right now if you see for a couple of titles this these titles what you have is basically nothing like zero million because they are well below the million mark so what we can do is we can change it to thousands so once we change it to the thousands you will see both on the left hand side and on the right hand side you have the the thousands as the uh, symbol over here but here in the middle you have the 15 million so this you have the summary label setting 
So in the summary level settings, if you change this auto units to let's say thousand, then only it will going to change. So it's up to us how we want to keep it. I want to keep it million because this will be a very higher level and values will always be in million irrespective of what category you will going to choose it over here. So it makes sense over here to use it. Also, there is a way that uh, you have these million units over here uh, in both of these cases and you can have decimal places, let's say two decimal place. Then in that case also you have the values appeared. So in this case, both of these units will always be in millions, but on the right hand side and on the left hand side, you will have the two decimal point value, which will be slightly more accurate. But generally what happens in the reporting that when the values are in millions, you usually don't too much worry about one decimal point or two decimal point because you are talking mostly in terms of millions like uh, 2 million, 3 million or maybe like 3.5 million. So maybe just one decimal point up to the max. So up to you what you want. If you want two, if you want one, you know, accordingly you will going to get it. But here in our case, two decimal points makes sense. So I'll just make it two so that all my values are appearing over here. So this is mainly uh, two settings which is very specific to uh, data labels that you should know because you may you will have to work with all of these settings just to make sure that your visualization is coming fine. Now we, I have chosen the product subcategory but I just want to make sure that you are aware that not just product subcategory you can choose any other category for example if you let's say want to understand for example we have the customer segment or we have the for example the customer name you know if, if you want to understand that so i can just remove this and i can even have the customer name so but as you would expect this will be quite a huge one and since we have a very detailed information so will not going to make a whole lot of sense so I'll just come back with the product subcategory. So up to us, what we want and uh, what sort of visualization makes sense for us. We will going to create it with the help of this bow tie chart and uh, you'll have something meaningful as an outcome. So that's about it, how you can create a bow tie chart. And now I'll meet you in the next video with a new topic. Hello there and welcome to the new Power BI tutorial where I will show you how you can create the Power BI box plot chart within the Power BI. So we will see that what the box plot chart is then how we can create it step by step and then we will go through the chart information as well. So before I move ahead with this visualization I will just want to show you a quick information that this sheet where I have mentioned the box plot and uh, various other tutorials that i am posting on my channel related to the power bi is present in the description you can utilize this link search the video based on your interest and if it is available over here you can jump directly th through the link which is present here along with this i have the google data studio report which is another link present where all of the videos related to various technologies like click or tableau python you have it over there where you can easily search and view those videos which i have posted along with some of the projects information all right so let's go ahead and see the box plot chart within power bi all right so here we have the box plot chart over here so this box plot chart is for four different years you can see from 2009 2010 11 and 12 we have the furniture office supplies and technologies for each of these uh, four years uh, duration and these charts over here uh, represents basically these uh, customer segments like where the furniture is home offices uh, it's corporate which is like an outlier that means a lot of sales is happening over here so this gives a lot of valuable information about uh, how the distribution of the data really looks like what are the outliers and uh, where the median is and some more information about uh, if, if you are really uh, want uh, are from the stream from the statistics it's more around what should what is a first quartile what is a second quartile what is the interquartile range all of those sort of things you can find it over here in this box plot chart 
So let's go ahead and see how you can create it from the scratch. All right, so what I'll do, I'll come here and remove this. And to create the box plot chart, I need to come over here on the get mode visuals, click on the get mode visuals, and it will show us a screen which where I need to go into advanced analytics. And here we have the box and whisker chart by MAQ software. And if you see, there is a small tick over here, like this one, there is a small tick at the end, which means this visual is certified by Power BI. That means Power BI has tested this and it is safe to use it within your visualization. But I want to give you a bit of a warning or some additional information that if your data is sensitive, always make sure that you are reading the licensing terms and agreement just so that your sensitive data is not being collected by any third party over here. Probably or may not be the case that uh, the MAQ software is collecting it, but it's always advisable to read the guidelines as to what the guidelines are to use it. What, if there is any licensing thing, you know, they may want you to have it before using it. But if you are like me who are just exploring this, there is no issue because I'm not dealing with any sensitive company data. I'm just using it for my demonstration to you or you may have any public data which you want to analyze let's say for better understanding of the situation or the like for example sports data i think it it is not a problem because it's anyway pu publicly presented but licensing is still a case if you are planning to use it commercially all right so i'll just close this because i have already added it and uh, this is present over here if you see this is a small icon for box and whisker plot and I have already added it. So what I'll do is I'll just click over here on this and uh, I can just expand this and I'll add the axis. So what I want to add an axis is the customer segment over here. And once I have it, I will add another category which I want to add the order date. And order date, this hierarchy is fine. I want to add the value which is nothing but the sales. So we have half of the information where I have the sales for each of the customer segment for their respective years. If you see what is the mean, median and all. But I want to further segregate it by their respective product categories. So we have the product category over here. I can bring it over here on the excess category too. And now my visualization is much more advanced. So if I just expand this, uncheck here, uncheck here, you will see that uh, we have visualization which talks about that our uh, average sale is going down over here. So over here, our average sale, uh, which is median in this case. So if you see from the top, it is the fifth value. So you have median type, whisker type, mean, Mean is nothing but average and median is another average. So mean is nothing but taking all the value and dividing by the number of values. And median is that first you sort all the values from lower value to higher value and pick the middle value. That's basically the, the basic difference between the mean and median. So it shows that our median value is going down. That means our sales, every sales is going down. However, if you see uh, our uh, base sale or the sale from for the first quartile is pretty much the same over the period of year. But if you compare it from 2009, it has gone down. So we see there is a problem which is going on in the furniture side. On the other hand, if you see, we have pretty much the same sale, every sale we have in 2009 when we compare it with the 2012. And then Similar is the case in the technology where you have the median sale higher as compared to the most recent year, which is 2012. That means all the categories is showing some sort of a sign, problem signs. Also, if you see, observe, there is a long tail over here, which indicates that there are some deals which are of higher value, taking the tail very high upward into the direction. So, so that's basically, you know, you get to know about 
what the distribution of the data is and how it is basically working it out uh, and you can have a visualization like this which is which showing you that almost all the transaction which is happening in the in this space in 2011 office supplies you have the uh, you have it in a very tight range over here so it it talks about a lot of different stuff like i mentioned you have the minimum and maximum value you have the first 25% 50% 75% values there is a intercultile range if if you are from statistics you may want to be aware of that and uh, you so that you can interpret the data easily but that's mainly about uh, how you can create the the chart the box plot chart and you have some uh, some you know uh, formatting options over here so you have the orientation very interesting one because right now this is more of a vertical orientation if you see the orientation is vertical and if you want horizontal uh, orientation then you can click over here on the horizontal and you have this horizontal orientation so from a comparison perspective it makes a lot of sense where you can compare not just individual technology uh, the bars within the technology but across the the three different sections or within the sections and do the data analysis similarly down there you have sorting option if you want to apply sorting from uh, category 1 category 2 right now it is ascending you have the option of choosing descending and you can choose the descending and accordingly it will going to sort it then you have the option of box option it has these options which is more user friendly from a statistician perspective whether you want median to be inclusive or exclusive based on how it is uh, showing you the data similarly the visco type you are you want to have the minimum or maximum or less than 1.5 iqr or equals to 1.5 which is more of a statistical uh, quantitative values that that you may want to apply or you want to have let's say for example one standard deviation and you will see the value is changed so that is helpful in looking at the outliers as to how this how well you know your data and accordingly you may want to choose in one of these options um, box and whisker width is again you know you may want to have like a small width or medium width which is nothing but the very general technique it's, it has nothing to do with the statistics but it's more around the look and feel so these are some of the important options which I wanted to show you that is available for us to to utilize it. If you are a statistician, you are you will going to play it a lot definitely, and you may want to have even your own custom setting which is uh, present over here as from a whisker type, which you can customize it based on the needs that you have. So that's mainly about it. The box and whisker plot present in the custom visual of Power BI which you can utilize it with just few clicks. You have the right visual in front of you, which helps you look at the distribution of data. So that's about it. And I'll meet you in the next video with a new topic. Hello there and welcome to the new Power BI tutorial where I will show you how you can create a bullet chart within Power BI. So bullet chart is a very meaningful chart, which helps us look at how well we are doing for as compared to the target so for example we have the targets for sales we have targets for budgets and uh, we may want to always evaluate our position let's say for example it's been six months that we are into the financial year or the calendar year and how well we are doing as compared to the target uh, so that means we have to manage the situation in such a way that we we should meet the target based on the defined period and the defined value and the bullet chart really helps us looking at this information and within power bi it's very easy to create a bullet chart with just few clicks so i'm going to show you how you can create this bullet chart just before that a quick information that this sheet which has a lot of power bi tutorial which i am posting almost every day is present in this sheet which you can search and based on your interest you can find the tutorial and you can click on the link directly from here uh, so this sheet is present in the description and you can utilize it uh, and share it with the, your friends or colleagues who may want to learn the power bi step by step 
also what I have in the description is the Google Data Studio report which contains all my video that I have posted on my channel related to Power BI or Tableau or ClickView, ClickSense, Python, all of those are present in just one single report which you can search and the link is present in the description. So I'll suggest go ahead and utilize that. All right, so now with the topic we have Power BI bullet chart, let's go ahead and start this. Okay, so here I am in the Power BI and here is a quick representation of the bullet chart not a very good representation i accept but just for the sake of example i have tried to create one version which make a little bit sense as to how well we are doing whether we are in green zone yellow zone or there is a red zone slight line that you can see we will see how we can create all of this and uh, and uh, create our visualization for comparison perspective all right, so what do we want is first of all, let's go ahead and remove this. So I've removed it and then within the visualization, uh, we need to go here on the get more visual and we will need to click on get more visual over here. Here in this visualization box, we can choose the bullet chart. We can basically do the search or we can come here in the all and i believe uh, we should have it either yeah there you go the first chart itself is the bullet chart and you can click on add since i have already added my bullet chart is present over here not only this if you don't find it here you can click on the search and you will be having the bullet chart searched for you so this is the bullet chart that i'm using and if you see this is uh, this visual is certified by power bi and if I'm not wrong, it is created by Microsoft itself. So if you see, if this is, yeah, this is created by the Microsoft Corporation. If you will see, there is a description which is presented over here, which you can read it just to get more information about this visual. So you can learn by having the additional information and you can have like frequently asked questions action to relate it to this power visual. All right, so since I have already added, but for you, you need to click on add to add this. Okay, now once we have this over here, we'll click on the bullet chart over here. Let me expand this. So what do we want? At the minimum, what we want is the category, the value and the target value. This is like the minimum what we need. Okay, so what is category? Let's say we want to add our favorite product category mm, let me put it again so we have product category we need to have the sales right and we need to have the target value now generally the target value is present in a separate field so what i've done is i've created a measure called sales target over here so if i click on the sales target it's nothing but sum of order of sales multiply with 1.2 so that means whatever the sales value will be, it will be increased by 20%. So for this example, I've created this, which I can then pull it over here on the target value. And if you see for each of these value that you have for each of the technology, self furniture and office supply, you have it ahead 20% over here. So this is a workaround that I have done, but maybe in your case, you will be having the actual target value in a separate field altogether, which you can utilize it. Okay, so now what we need next is basically these four categories, which is needs improvement, that means red, satisfactory, that means let's say yellow, good, let's say orange, and very good, let's say green. So we can choose each of these categories and, and basically figure it out whether uh, this is really making sense for us. So need improvement. So what we need is basically over here is sales. I'll just put sales again. So if you see the value is sales and need improvement is also sales. So that's why it is red. But what we, what we can do is right now it is some, we can change it to minimum, right? And this will have the minimum of sales. After that, what we can do is add again the sales over here in the satisfactory. 
and now if you see you have the satisfactory value which is coming over here um, so what we can do is from satis for satisfactory let's say we say average so if you see the average is comparatively very high from the uh, from the minimum so that's why you have the minimum value over here and then you have the satisfactory and let's say the last point what we take is the good um so for good again we'll try to take the sales and let's just try to take the maximum probably so that's what you are getting it over here but uh, if you have the different values for these different categories what where it needs improvement satisfactory good and generally they are available if you need to capture it as a metric all of these values you can provide it needs improvement satisfactory good and if you have another criteria let's say for very good so generally what happens is red yellow then orange and then finally the green so based on the color coding that is being followed based on number of codes that you have you can do this configuration i have just done the workaround over here with the minimum average and uh, the max of sales however you always have the option where you can have these categories with you as a separate values within the database or along with these categories as part of the kpi uh, which you can show it to your user along with the uh, target so target for me is coming over here the 20 percent ahead of what the actual value is and then along with that we can show this red yellow and green information based on the configuration that we are making which makes it very interactive and useful for anyone who is viewing it and need to measure how well they are doing for their respective program that they are managing so that's about it and i'll meet you in the next video with a new topic hello there and welcome to the new power bi tutorial where i will show you how you can create a tornado chart within power bi so tornado chart is basically a chart which helps us do the comparative analysis for example if we have the group of category values which we want to compare how we are doing from last year to current year under each category actual sales perspective or actual profit perspective we can do that comparison with the help of the tornado chart and there are various other use cases but it's just that it looks really good and uh, i think the inspiration is coming from the uh, tableau where in tableau it's been used a lot for doing a comparative analysis and here with just few clicks within the power bi you can create the tornado chart and before i move on to turn tornado chart you uh if you are new to this uh, to my channel uh, or to this power bi series then i would like to tell you that this sheet is present within the description where i have mentioned all of the power bi tutorial title along with their link so you can search any of the video over here or you can follow step by step and you can click on the link or if you want to create your own custom list you can create your own custom list and uh, produce or you know learn the way you want it so this this sheet is present in the description which you can utilize it along with that i have the google data studio report which contains all of my channel's video for power bi for tableau for click sense click view python which you can use it along with that there are projects as well which you would like to use and irrespective of what tool you use you can still create you know practice with the help of the, those projects and you can search each of those projects with it with that uh, google data studio report all right a lo lot of marketing now let's go ahead and uh, start with the power bi tornado chart so here we are within the power bi and this is how the tornado chart looks like so what i am doing right now i have these categories like appliances and what i'm doing is i'm comparing 2010 which is uh, sort of the magenta purple i think if, if i'm colorblind i think that's what it is but if i'm not colorblind then probably that's what it is but over here we have this uh, sort of greenish color that that we have and uh, this basically indicates how well we are doing so for example office machine 
in 2012 we have the higher value of office machine as compared to the 2010 and we can do any other comparison that we want like for example 2009 and i want to compare it by holding down the control key i can choose 2012 and it will show us that value all right so how we can create it we'll just come over here and i'll just remove this and i'll remove this as well okay and uh, i'll now go into the visualization over here in the three ellipses, ellipses which is get more visual so these are the custom visual that we need to get once you click it over here you need to go into this get more visual option and get more visual is where uh, you will going to come under all and here you have the tornado chart if it is not present here maybe in your version you can search it from here i'm using the most recent version of the power bi and i have this tornado chart over here uh, which i can click on add since i have already added it it's present here is this is a very small icon of tornado chart so i will just going to close this and click it over here tornado 2.1.0 is basically the version that i'm using so i'll just click it over here and i'll try to expand this okay so once i have expanded this what it is showing us is basically three different sections where we have to put the field one is a group second is legend and third is values okay so what is group so group if we come over here is the subcategory this is how we want to group the values then we have the order date all right let's come it over here and i will choose the date hierarchy and date hierarchy is coming to here it should be fine because i want to have the year level year level comparison and then the values for values i'm going to pick the sales so now if you see what we have is the most late, uh, most earlier year is the 2009 and 2010 so if you see office machine in 2009 you have a lot of sales compared to the 2010 which is all almost or slightly near to the half of the sales which you did in the previous year now how to do that comparison where you can basically customize this uh, that you want to compare 2009 with 2012 or you want to compare 2010 with 2011 so it's like you have more control over the visualization well for that what you need to do is click outside and come over here in the slicer so you have the slicer over here and if i just put it on the most right over here you will see that uh, i'm going to pull the order date and if i come over here and click on the date hierarchy we have the date hierarchy so if i just and i'll reduce this okay here you go we have the i'll just try to get it out it's more around the layering and all so now if i just expand this oops some misalignment so let me just align it properly and uh, i'll just pick 2009 and hold down my control key and pick 2012 all right so now the same visualization is present here if you want you can expand this if it goes well with the with this i think this much is fine or this much is fine so now we can compare whatever we want make sure you hold down your control key and click here to uncheck it and let's say you want to compare 2009 with 2012 you have this visualization so 2009 is this purplish color and you have this 2012 which more is greenish color over here so that's how you can create the tornado chart for doing the comparative analysis which helps you understand the data in this perspective that as compared to the previous year how well you are doing but this is not limited to to this like legend you can have other legend as well based on your interest it can be any categorical value as well but here since year made more sense i chose the year but you can experiment with other 
uh, legends based on your interest. So that's about it and I'll meet you in the next video with a new topic. But just one last quick thing is related to the formatting. If I click on format, you will see that the data color is the option which I wanted to show you. So you can choose whatever data, uh, the color option that you like from here based on the needs and uh, see what should be the first value for the first bar and what should be the value to the second bar and accordingly it will going to uh, help you use the or reduce the visualization all right so that's pretty much it now i'll meet you for sure in the next video